So today we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where the Macedonian Empire comes back. Now in this series, I've done the Mongolian Empire, I've done the British Empire, I've done the Roman Empire, but today we're doing the Macedonian Empire. And if you don't know what this empire is, first of all, go read a history book. And second of all, it was the empire that was led by Alexander the Great at one point in time. And this is Alexander the Great's empire as we see it right here. Now this isn't necessarily Macedonia at its peak. I do believe it had some land over in Libya, but as far as I'm concerned, this is what it looked like after Alexander the Great's conquest. So we're going to be picking up right here and plopping this empire on the world map in 2024. If you do enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. All the support is greatly appreciated. I'm currently recording this on August 6th and I go to college at the end of the month. So this is getting kind of scary, guys. Um, The background is obviously going to change soon. It's going to be my dorm room. I have two roommates in said dorm room. So I, I don't know if I'm ever going to find time to record a video. Uh, if not, I'll find a way to make it work. So don't worry. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump straight into the scenario. So the Macedonian Empire just plop right back on the map. No questions asked. And the their leader, of course, is going to be Alexander the Great. I mean, how could it not be? So their first order of business, as you know, the probably one of the stronger countries in the world, assuming that they have modern equipment, is to wipe out all these little bubbles of countries around them. So like the remainder of Greece, they're going to go ahead and just, you know, gobble that right on up and get rid of it and get rid of it off the map. They'll take over Cyprus and invade Turkey, which is a shell of its former self. I'm not sure how strong this these two strips of lands would be. Uh, but I know that there would be a lot less strong than Turkey or Macedonia itself. So uh, goodbye. And finally, we'll just have them in next Syria. I mean, they're not going to be able to fight back. It's just a bunch of desert and Israel. We can get rid of that. Speaking of Israel, uh, tensions in the Middle East for the fifth time this year, right? Right. Realistically, no one's going to stop this from happening. And you might be wondering like, hey, what is NATO doing since, you know, Greece and Turkey are in NATO? Well, NATO doesn't really care. But in a more simple way, we're going to ignore NATO for that one simple little thing of getting rid of these little tiny extremities. But now NATO is, you know, back on it. They're like, all right, hey, don't do that anymore. We're going to get you. The Macedonian Empire is like, okay, we'll focus elsewhere. And elsewhere is going to be in the Caucasian Mountains, where Georgia and Azerbaijan remain. These two countries, well, they don't really have that many allies. I mean, Georgia is a NATO partner, and Azerbaijan doesn't have Turkey. So no one's going to come to the help of them. In fact, Russia is going to jump in because it's Russia. But of course, they already have their South Ossetia and Abkhazia. Elsewhere, Macedonian troops start to enter into the country, and Russian troops will eventually fully mobilize against Georgia and Azerbaijan, taking as much land as they can away from the Macedonians. A few skirmishes occur along the connected border, but no war breaks out from it, although tensions between these two empires are now not so great. But they are still able to sit down at a table with each other and draw out a peace treaty, which will look something like this. So all of northern Georgia will go over to Russia, and little two tiny parts of Azerbaijan will go over to Russia as well, but the rest of it will be annexed in to the Macedonian Empire. Okay, cool. So Macedonia has uh, connected up with Russia. They now share a border with one of the stronger countries in the world. What does that mean for them? Well, it just means that they're about to show off. Now, I'm not sure how like strong Macedonia is. I don't think they're strong enough to take on Russia, but they have all of Turkey and all of Iran and all of Israel. They have all of Greece and a majority of Pakistan. So this thing is actually probably top 10, definitely top 10, maybe pushing top Six. Don't worry, we'll get them stronger here in a second though. The remainder of Egypt is uh, very weak. And I do want to bring up a really important point right now. So there's like things like the African Union and the, what is it? The Islamic thing? What I forgot what it was called. But it's like a, it's an alliance of uh, Islamic nations. I don't know if those are, uh, and my bad for not knowing, but I don't think, I don't know if those are defensive alliances. I don't think the African Union is. The African Union is more so of uh, an economical thing. But the other thing, if it does exist, it might also just be a political slash economic thing. I don't think it's military, so... I should be fine with, you know, invading these countries, but I do just want to bring that point up just in case. Anyway, as for Egypt, they will get fully annexed by the Macedonian Empire. And if you've seen my other empire videos, you'll know that uh, usually what happens is that the empires at first will just fully annex as much as they can. But as they get larger, it could, it's a little bit more expensive and costly to, you know, fully annex countries. So they will instead set up puppermint, pu 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 I combined puppet and government, but they'll set up puppet governments instead. But as for now, uh, these guys are just going to keep just obliterating countries. I mean, these countries all were weakened by the Macedonian Empire's re-existence. So it makes sense that A, no one would come to help them and B, that they won't fight back too much. I mean, maybe they won't fight back at all. Maybe they'll just accept their fate. But that probably does it for now, maybe. I mean, there's like a little tip of Afghanistan, the rest of Kyrgyzstan, and then Pakistan. I don't know if you want to go after those because I don't know if it's really worth it. I mean, this land over here, how valuable is it really? So how about this? Instead, we'll have these three countries and the remnants unite together into one 
I don't know if this is plausible. I don't know if they would actually be able to unite together because of their differences. You know how Central Asia is with Kyrgyzstan and uh, Tajikistan. Also, I call it Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan. I always get it mixed up, sorry. Tajikistan, Afghanistan, and uh, Pakistan will unite together. Kyrgyzstan is still fine, they're right here. They have a little uh, thing going into them. What does the Macedonian Empire do from here? Well, in real life, the Macedonian Empire just kind of went on a conquest, you know. They took over Persia, then moved up into Central Asia. They moved down into Egypt. I don't remember what the goal of that was. I mean, just expansion, I guess. Their next uh, country on the chopping block is going to be uh, Libya. And uh, what did Libya do? Well, they're in the way. You see, the Macedonian Empire came before the Roman Empire, so uh, they don't really, like, you know, want to go after a whole Rome thing, but they do want to rule the Mediterranean, which I guess is sort of a Rome thing, but Rome didn't exist when they existed, so they don't know that. In fact, you could say that Rome was a copy of Macedonia in a way. Not realistically, but in this scenario. All right, that's a uh, pretty good damage. The Libyans will fight back, uh, defending their capital as well as they can. Tripoli is way over here, though. So they're going to, you know, fight back. And that goes pretty well until the Macedonians refurbish their front lines and start pushing in into the desert regions, which is... uh. A, pointless, and B, surprising. And these guys are going to come up under the Libyan forces and threaten an encirclement, which will cause them to fall back and kind of bulge up over here. Now we get like to the really tough bloody fighting right in here, this little sweep. But the Macedonians are more victorious and a push towards Tripoli is started. This is also pretty uh, bloody. You know, the fighting and advancement is slowed down. However, one day they are able to capture the whole northern Il Libyan coast and as well as Tripoli. And from here, Libya is on the downfall as Macedonian forces spread out through the rest of the country, eventually leading it to surrender. And there it is, our first puppet state. I said it would happen, and here we have it happening. So Macedonia will annex all the northern coast of Libya, pretty much all the populated and important areas, and leave the rest to be their own puppet. So like, I guess the sand, and over here, I guess is fine. But really, puppet states aren't too important in these scenarios. It's more so of them just being kind of like a barrier between the empire and other countries. In this case, it's kind of a barrier between them and Algeria uh, because Niger and Chad aren't going to do anything to Macedonia. They'd get absolutely smacked. But Algeria could put up a pretty good fight, but they won't be because they don't even border them. So now let's take a look somewhere else. Ooh, where do we want to tackle next? Let's go after Turkmenistan. Now, Turkmenistan here is a country which is, I honestly don't know too much about. I've said it before, but I really don't know what happens over here. I've heard that it's kind of like an authoritative kind of country, but I don't know if that's true. I uh, didn't check the source on that either. But yeah, what what even happens at Turkmenistan? Is it like, you know, knock off Turkey? That could be offensive, I take it back. But what we see Macedonia do is once again fully annex another country, and this will likely be the last country they fully annex, and that's for multiple reasons. Reason one is because a giant alliance just formed over here in Central Asia, and reason two is because they're becoming too big to just, you know, keep fully annexing countries. But the existence of this pact, which is against Macedonia, proves that no one really approves of what they're doing. I mean, obviously, if a big empire comes back out of nowhere and starts, you know, taking over innocent countries, no one's really going to support that, unless you're like, I guess, North Korea. I, I don't know. Even then, I don't think they would support it, so I'm sure we'll find a few countries that would be fine with it. I mean, there's always a few weirdos out there. But with Central Asia now being gatekeep, I mean, they could easily take on this alliance and win. So we're going to throw Russia into it just to, you know, kind of double down. I'm not going to lie to you. I already planned on putting Russia in there. I just kind of forgot to color it in. So there really isn't a better time, right? Russia enters into the alliance, making Macedonia very scared to invade it because you can't take on Russia just yet. You're not strong enough. But that leads them to a whole bunch of other areas they could go. They could go after Arabia. They could go after India. They can go after Africa or they can go after Europe. And uh, so if I'm them, I'm probably going after Africa. If you want to expand, that is. I'm trying to base it off of like the land value. So if you took over Sudan, that I mean, that's good. Sudan is a very big country. You can find a lot of resources there, but you're not going to get the economical benefits that you would get if you invaded a country like Saudi Arabia or like uh, maybe Romania. But I think you guys can get my point. With that being said, they're going to invade Sudan. All that yapping for nothing. Macedonian forces will enter into the Sudan Sudanese. I think that's correct. They'll enter into Sudan and start taking over a lot of land. We then see South Sudan join in on this war, like, whoa. And they too will attempt to invade into Sudan, but that doesn't go too well as the Sudanese army is kind of ready for them and starts to invade. The hate is real. They're not even fighting back against Macedonia. They're just invading South Sudan. 
which is kind of funny. But eventually, Sudan will be finished off, and their forces in South Sudan will be forced to surrender, and South Sudan and Macedonia will create a peace treaty in which Sudan is divided up. All right, so this is what we're looking like now in Macedonia. I think that their conquests in Africa are probably going to come to an end now because they're just looking like, you know, looking at Chad, I guess, and maybe Eritrea. Those two would be maybe useful but now you're getting kind of far from your capital, which is way over here. So how about you conquest elsewhere and leave Africa alone? You've already done less damage. Also, forgot to color it again, but South Sudan will join in on an alliance with Macedonia, kind of fortifying their empire as a big threat to the world, because at this point they are definitely top five and gaining strength every single day. Now, uh, you could argue that the stability would be at an all-time low. And to that, I would say, yes, you are correct. It would be very unstable and would probably collapse just like how it did in real life into multiple different empires. But this is an Aedas Pro video and uh, we don't do that here. Although in the last empire video, I did say that I wanted to like, you know, start the regression of empires. I did that with Indonesia. So I think I might still do that today. But now it's time for the Macedonian Empire to invade elsewhere. And that elsewhere is going to be right into Saudi. Oh, never mind. We're not invading Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia will join in on Russia's pact and uh, that will uh, kind of deter Macedonia from going to war with them. Instead, they'll pick on some smaller countries like Qatar and the UAE. At this point, I think other countries would get involved. More specifically, the Russian alliance would probably stop uh, the red team from invading these two countries. But once again, a Pro video, who cares, right? So they snatch both of these countries' capitals and, well, fully invade them. And in this peace treaty, they are both made into puppet states and not annexed at all. So this kind of gives them influence down further south in the Arabian Peninsula and kind of puts them right on the border of Saudi Arabia, raising tension and putting pressure on the Saudi government. But now we turn our focus over to Europe. The Macedonian Empire needs some allies for what it wants to do next. Who wants to ally up with the Macedonian Empire? Well, not really anybody, really. I mean, they get Serbia. That's cool. Um, No one else in Europe wants to join your alliance, though. So what does the Macedonian Empire do? Well, they decide to kind of switch it up a little bit. They go to Russia and are like, hey... We got this secret plan and we're going to need you to go ahead and, uh, you know, sit down with us and have this sneaky little talk. So they have their talk and the world is like, whatever, nothing happens for a few months. And then bam, out of nowhere, Macedonia declares war on NATO. Well, I guess they would probably declare war on like North Macedonia, which would activate NATO. And uh, everyone's like, what are you doing? You're not going to win this war. And then guess what? I mean, you guys probably saw it coming, but Russia will join in on this war on the side of Macedonia and Serbia, Belarus, and South Sudan will all join as well. So we have this big old chunk of land versus NATO. Now, what about the uh, Purple Alliance? Well, they're uh, going to stay out of this war. And that's for the pretty good reason of they don't want to fight NATO. They would, uh, first of all, they would offer pretty much nothing. Saudi Arabia, they have good relations with the United States. So obviously they wouldn't want to join. And as for the rest of Central Asia, they just wouldn't pull their weight, so there's no point in them joining anyway. But now the Macedonians will start their invasion of NATO. Unfortunately for Kosovo, Serbia will launch an invasion of them. And Macedonian troops will flood up north into Romania. Now what about Ukraine? Well, Ukraine is, uh, they're, they're not in this war. Which is good for the Red Team, you know, for some reason the, the Russia-Ukraine war just never happened. Uh, but elsewhere, Russia will invade into Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. We've all seen this a thousand times on this channel. We know that they stand no chance against Russia. But once it gets to the border of Poland, that's where the resistance will step in, as all of NATO's troops are on the border of Russia and Poland. As for Finland and Russia, we also all know how this usually plays out. It's a bunch of little war games between these two. You know, they'll invade each other. Finland is capable of holding their own for a little bit, but eventually they would fall. But they are uh, kind of lucky that they have two front lines, maybe even three, technically. But as for the Macedonian Empire's navy, I wouldn't put any money on it because I don't think that it's any good, especially against NATO's navy. navy. You, know, you have the United States, which is you know, already pretty much game over. I'm not going to lie, but you never know. This is an Aedas Pro video, so we'll just have to see how it all plays out. And so far, it's playing out pretty good, as it usually does. Macedonia and Russia link up and are able to take over Warsaw together and continue their conquest in the NATO territory. The Macedonians and the Russians will do great things in Slovakia, not well, really bad, horrible things, but great things in their own eyes, in their own country, taking out the Balkans and solving that whole issue. But then they will near up into Austria, take over Vienna, take over parts of Czechia, and wipe out some more of Poland. And after that, they are uh, hitting a brick wall. And that brick wall is made out of American troops, as well as French and British troops. 
This brick wall is very hard to drill through. Uh, they, they will go ahead and do it as best as they can, and they even reach the borders of Germany. However, said brick wall is now pushing back against these guys, and the brick wall turns out to, uh, well, be a very mean, very fast agile brick wall that is running laps what am i even saying anymore these troops are uh very good at uh, knocking back the russians specifically the russians the macedonians do a little bit better but not much better because serbia will then get invaded which kind of hurts the macedonians front line as nato troops are now in montenegro kosovo and albania so they're forced to kind of pull troops from romania and that just weakens their whole front line and it all starts to go to hell as the nato troops are now on the border of Macedonia. As for Russia and friends, they will actually do some good things up in Finland, pushing back the Finnish and getting near to Helsinki. The only issue is, is the onslaught of NATO troops who are entering into Belarus. Said troops also enter into Kaliningrad, as well as the invaded parts of Lithuania. And slowly but surely, NATO creeps its way back into this war against Russia and Macedonia. But there is one issue, and that is that they're not just fighting Russia. You guys have seen USA and NATO versus Russia a million times. Usually, Russia always loses. Uh, but now they have Macedonia on their side, and that's a whole nother strategic thing. You have to invade the Middle East pretty much, and that's kind of hard to do. I mean, just look at real life. The Macedonian Empire fell, didn't it? The Middle East broke into like a billion different empires. Well, not really. It was like three. Dude, I'm getting like flashbacks to like sophomore year of high school when I took AP World and learned about all these things. I forgot. There was three empires. I forgot what they were called, though. One of them was Persia. No, I'm thinking of like the three stages of Persia. It's like the, the Parthians and... The Sa Sasquatches? Sassinians? Something like that. I forgot what the other one's called. But back to the border, NATO troops will continue to compile against the Macedonians, eventually entering into their territory. And at this point, Macedonia is like, you know what? Frick it. Conscription time. And a million troops hit the border, going up against NATO. And NATO's like, whoa, we are not fighting all that. No, conscription is kind of like a... It's not a great thing to pull into these videos because it's just kind of like a, a dumb thing. Like, hey... Here's a million troops out of nowhere. Realistically, I mean, that can happen and it has happened before, but usually if countries conscript, it doesn't end too well for them in like the end stages of the war. They usually just collapse like Germany did. So uh, conscription is bad, but NATO will now shift its focus from Macedonia to Russia because screw Russia, right? They hate Russia. The whole purpose of NATO is being the biggest hater of Russia in history. So they will take back the Baltics and liberate all of Finland and then invade into Belarus in different parts of Russia before saying, hey, we're done with this war. You know what? Take Bulgaria, take North Macedonia, Albania. We don't care. Screw those areas. Let's just, uh, let's peace out. And uh, the red team will accept this. And that's because the red team knows that it would more than likely lose in the end stage. Now, you got to remember that the world is basically throwing its support behind NATO in this scenario. And that's because the Macedonian Empire is just some random hostile empire that started attacking uh you know, peaceful countries that did nothing. So kind of like the Ukraine war in a way where most of the world, I say most very loosely, supports Ukraine. Most of the world will support NATO in this scenario, which helps them out a lot. But as for this peace treaty here, we see only one border change happen. That is the annexation of Albania, North Macedonia, and Bulgaria. Everything else stays as it was before, which makes Russia kind of pissed off. But they will leave the Purple Alliance and cut ties with Macedonia. Screw it, you know, we, if they ever want to fight, we'll throw hands with them and win. But we have to go cope over the fact that we got nothing out of this war and, you know, just lost a few million men. Belarus will also leave the alliance. And Serbia, after losing land, will say screw you and also lose the alliance. So, now what we're looking at is the Macedonian Empire and uh, some very doable invasions if they wanted to. Only one slight issue, and that is that, uh, well, the Macedonian Empire is starting to crumble. So like I said earlier, I do want to start to show the end stages of these empires. So this is it at its peak, but from here, it's only downhill. I can't think of a, you know, a reasoning as to why these countries would you know collapse because of the plot armor that i give them early on so it's, it's basically writing a bad story but over the next couple of decades the macedonian empire will lose and be able to retake qatar and the uae following that is a pretty massive civil war uh it, it doesn't look exactly like this this is just me taking a very big brush size 300 and just kind of coloring in an area but this is like the general area where the civil war happens macedonia splits into two which yes does mean that uh, they lost that civil war and then this thing would probably explode into like a million different pieces you know you have your iran you have pakistan you have your turkmenistan and then your uh, afghanistan and your uh, turk uh, tajikistan and uzbekistan 
And then this right here is a void of nothing. Actually, that's Iran. But we're not worried about this thing. That thing will sort itself out. We're worried about this thing. After seeing the weakness that uh, Macedonia has, South Sudan will probably leave. But what we see then is their puppet state leaving. And uh, who knows, maybe they join Chad or I guess South Sudan. Libya will probably leave and join up with... Maybe there's like a, a big union in Africa. As you can see, I'm just kind of, you know, pulling straws here. But that's the creativity of mapping. You can kind of just do whatever you want and no one can tell you otherwise because this is a pre-recorded video. But Macedonia in its ending stages will look something like this. Um, maybe in the next coming years we see Egypt rebel away. Other than that, maybe the Middle East leaves. But over time, Macedonia will be reduced to something that looks like this. And eventually one day, NATO will hold a coalition against it, reclaiming all of their lost countries and uh, wiping Macedonia out of existence. That's how it falls and ends. And uh, that is also how this video ends. So if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. All the support is greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.